This is a IBM 760EL. It was built around 1996 more or less because not all the parts are from the same laptop. This one has a Pentium processor and 32 megabytes of RAM, TFT display, and uses FreeDOS for the operating system. The borrowed plastic dimmer switch doesn't quite fit, and there's no battery. But most of it is more or less working, and as you can tell, this one isn't a perfect restoration, but it does have a flip-up keyboard, which I think is actually pretty cool. I used these three parts laptops I had to form our amalgamation ThinkPad. So, the uh, first one is uh, from Goodwill Computer Center, back when uh, they used to sell scrap tops. It uh, runs, but uh, it's pretty beat up and it's missing some important parts. The second one, well, it's from eBay. It works, but does have a dead screen. And our final contender is, well, probably the most working out of them, but the interior is completely empty. And, well, the corner's pretty badly damaged, and it's missing, well, the brightness knob. But, um, biggest issue with all these is only one had the hard drive uh, ribbon cable, which is kind of hard to find. Okay, so I originally planned to uh, make this a bit of a simpler project that didn't involve uh, disassembling everything completely. I was going to essentially take the, um, well, plastic uh, that attaches uh, to the outside of the bezel for the dimmer switch from the dead panel and attach it to the TFT display. Then I was going to, well, combine the best chassis because uh, I can't really use a chassis like this to um, create a nice little base platform. And from there, it was just going to be a relatively uh, simple swap and keyboard repair. But what ended up happening was, well, the one with the intact chassis, its motherboard was dead. So um, I ended up having to, well, swap over quite a bit of parts. And uh, in the end, pretty much everything is disassembled. So I have a lot of bezels. Most of them are cracked, though. Anyways, let's move on and show how to, well, disassemble one of these ThinkPads. So for basic disassembly, um, just open it up. The keyboard should pop up. You can close the keyboard down. Yeah. And instead of pulling it like this to open, you're going to push it forward and push up gently on the keyboard, and you should have access to the internals. Over here is the hard drive. There's the, uh, well, it, this is where a battery would have gone, but... Anyways, um, there's a disk drive over there, and as you can tell, we have a CF card adapter here, which I think up to 4 gigabytes of compact flash will work, maybe 8, I'm not sure. But either way, I bought a 1 gigabyte card. It's, uh, good enough, I guess. And I made this little, uh, well, kind of cardboard uh, adapter. Okay, removing the disk drive is a little bit harder, but if you just push up there, or just push here and kind of grab underneath, but you gotta be careful because this thing is back heavy. If you notice, it's kind of tilting. But uh, I'm sure it's a little bit easier when uh, you're not staring at a camera display. So let's wind back the clock a little bit to, uh, well, when I was actually uh, disassembling the screens. And keyboard on this ThinkPad. But first I had to remove the squares of black tape that cover the five screws underneath the screen. On this laptop they came off pretty easily, but this may vary. The screws that hold down the plastic bezel are different sizes, so using a hardware maintenance manual is advisable. And then remove the bezel. After that, let's remove some of the screws on the back of the system. There are two on the right and two on the left, but there are also two in the middle, which I did forget initially. Next, remove the keyboard, remove the screws on the monitor, ignore the occasional piece of brittle plastic, unplug the ribbon cable, and don't forget the small black cable as well. And after all that, you can remove the screen. So, uh... I guess, uh, hopefully that was an okay tutorial. Moving on, we're going to talk about, well, replacing the, um, I guess, uh, dimmer switch and, uh, well, the back of the panel. 
So um, originally the panel had this like kind of dent in it on the back, and I was hoping to replace it with one of these, but it turns out these uh, actually have different thicknesses for the, at least the DSTN and TFT panels. So my solution to that was, well, uh, JB Plastic Weld, and um, what appears, I guess, as a uh, orange piece of plastic was a sanded down expired uh, debit card. So um, that solution allowed me to kind of just uh, pop it back in and overall it doesn't look perfect but it gets the job done. So okay after that we can move on to a maintenance issue that if you don't address it'll cause major problems in the future and uh, this applies not just to the 760EL but to other 760 models and that is the Cool Metal Hydrate standby battery. This is a little battery kind of just located within the keyboard. The keyboard itself isn't that hard to disassemble but also contains some other components which you may or may not need to replace such as the CMOS battery and the speakers but after removing the keyboard bezel you can just kind of open it up but there is a tedious uh, portion to this, which uh, essentially involves, well, removing the uh, ribbon cables. If you do happen to have corrosion in your system and something pops out, like maybe the, uh, I guess in my case, it was the nickel metal hydrate battery and speaker cable in one go, which um, is a bit unfortunate, but you should be able to take this out if you're careful, if there isn't corrosion already. And unfortunately, due to the uh, corrosion on my board, I did actually have to use a, another keyboard's uh, components to uh, resolder everything together. But, and I did make my own little uh, CMOS battery for it. So moving on, I uh, essentially just used hot glue, which isn't the most advisable thing to do to um, attach, well, essentially the components during soldering and hopefully make it a little bit stronger when I put the five uh, ribbon cables back in place. So um, soldering it's actually quite straightforward. It's just pop in the connector and then tap it with a soldering iron and heat it up a little bit. So um, after that though, uh, you have to deal with reattaching all the ribbon cables, which um, is probably the most tedious process of the, well, entire project. So moving on though, after you uh, get everything flush, you can leave it like this and test if everything's plugged in. And if it isn't, you could plug in the ribbon cables again. But hopefully everything will work out on the first time. Okay, so now that I had a unit that I could uh, type on and test if it uh, worked, I decided to, uh, well, install FreeDOS, which uh, would have been quite easy but uh, I had to like transplant the installation because the 760EL does not boot off of a CD and um, I don't have a floppy disk for it so uh, I just put in a compact CF card adapter in there and just replace the CF card between the two systems and use that system to install FreeDOS and the installer was fortunately quite straightforward. So uh, to talk a little bit about my experience with FreeDOS, I haven't really used uh, DOS or FreeDOS that much. And the first thing I guess uh, I tried to do was uh, install like some sort of uh, GUI onto the system. Uh, FreeDOS comes with a few GUIs. Uh, there's uh, OpenGem and Seal. I also found uh, well, a very interesting GUI called XCOM, which I think was done by a single developer, or at least that's the impression I got. And, um, well, it runs quite well uh, for the hardware and for what it is, but uh, it is incredibly slow if you try to do, like, video playback and things like that, which is probably expected. These 32 megabytes of RAM and a Pentium is not exactly that fast. So, um... There's also a package manager called Ftimpulse, which uh, is quite neat. Um, one downside though, if you have a one gigabyte card, you can't just install everything at once. So um, you're kind of uh, stuck using the, uh, I guess, CD and uh, kind of alternating between the two for uh, packages, which um, 
would be fine, except the package manager seems to try to seek out the location on the CD, and I don't think my disk drive's in the best condition. It uh, does still work, but makes some kind of awful grinding noises. And uh, also uh, seeks very slowly. And finally, I did a little bit of programming on here, but it was just, uh, uh, I think it's called like FBASIC. And uh, I only really just figured out how to um, set up a loop and if statements, but it's basic, so um, it's pretty easy to figure out. So rather than that, uh, I wrote through this uh, Happy Holidays program. And um, I'd like to wish everyone Happy Holidays and... Uh, if you're watching this video later, peace and have a good one.